is burning like fire in my bones. I feel like I need 12 hours to unload what we have. But I'm going to trust God in the brevity of the time we have that what you need, you will receive. What we need, we will receive in the mighty name of Jesus. The month of August, our deliberation is victory at the gates. 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 Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 24, I read from verse 7 to verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24, I read from verse 7 to verse 10. Please, I want to implore you to open your heart to God's word to us in this season. I sense that the reason why the Lord um, designed it that we would have Kairos before this is because this is for someone the access to the back end. You know, in Kairos, we're talking about calendar events. In this month, we are, we are going to where the calendar is designed. And now things are inked on that calendar. Proverbs chapter 24, I read from verse 7 to verse 10. It says, wisdom is too high for a fool. He opens not his mouth in the gate. Verse 8, he that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. Verse 10 is scripture, I know you know. And you are wondering how these verses are connected. I have good news for the children. They can't wait for their own space. They can't wait. And I have good news for them. And I have good news for you too. But I will announce it to the children first. That the Lord has done it. And they will shout. Me. Adults will be calculating. How shall these things be? But the children will shout. <laughs> Glory to God. Verse 10 says. If you faint in the day of adversity. Your strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity. Your strength is small. Please give us verse seven again wisdom is too high for a fool he does not open his mouth in the gate when you study scriptures and you begin to delve into the illumination that the spirit of god gives it becomes clear to us that gates are symbolic in scriptures for one gates refer to access and entry points where we determine what or who goes in and what or who goes out right um, many of you in this room were born in in places where you needed to have gates your door had a gate do you understand what i'm talking about and the gate of your door had a gate and your compound I'd, ah, I've not heard the word compound in a long time. And your compound had a gate. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, I mean, how I many had the culture shock when you arrived in Canada and you just saw houses, like houses with no gates? And like, are these people joking? Don't be deceived, they are still gated neighborhoods. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But for the general population, it's considered safe enough not to need a gate. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1. Gates would or could symbolize entry or access point. It says now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. The consequence of that is no one went out and nothing came in the gates were shut i am sensing i might need to do an illustration please please pk let me have my board is it fine is it is it okay to to illustrate during 11 a.m service is it fine all right if thank you sir please help me celebrate pk i need you to understand it because when you get this, there are some demands that will be placed on you and they will not feel like demands again. 
But if you don't get it, it's going to be like, ah, oh, they've come again. Because I have come again. Let me just let you know. I have come again. Now, if a gate... Okay. Some people have been here. I know them. Let's hope that we have one that will work. All right. Are you with me? This is the map of Wakanda. Are you okay? If a gate is what determines exit and entry, access, who or what goes in, who or what comes out, does it make sense for the gates to be here? Where does it make sense for a gate to be? Somewhere here. Or somewhere here. Or somewhere here. Right? Or somewhere here. Or somewhere here. Or somewhere here. Right? So, will you remember definition number one? That a gate is symbolic of an entry and it decides what goes in. In fact, when you study how God created human species, plants, animals, we have things that function like gates. And there is a determination of what goes in and what comes out. A lot of things we call disease is actually when what shouldn't have gone in has gone in. And what shouldn't have gone out has gone out. A lot of things that people face in their lives. Let me go to definition number two. Definition number two is a gate is also symbolic of the place where decisions are made. Please give us Proverbs chapter 24 verse 7 in the Amplified. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opens not his mouth in the gate where the city's rulers sit in judgment. So he's saying that while there is a border dimension to the gates, there is a more crucial function which is just beyond securing the borders such that are you with me are you with me in ancient times this had dual function there was security system with border patrol and watchtowers and watchmen that would have bows and arrows and cannons and whatever technology they had at the time in addition to that the city's rulers the decision makers will also sit down at the gates and they will make decisions that will affect everybody inside. And they just sat down a few people at the table. And they will just say, okay, decision made, and that's it. They, what these others will hear is just breaking news. Are you with me? Are you with me? Now, as time began to evolve, it became clear that we could separate the two. So we left border at the edges, but the gates moved inside. Hello, are you with me? So if we are saying the gates moved, it means that the decision makers can be here. They can be here. They can be here. So Canada can have borders, but there is a place where the decision makers sit down to make decisions. Are you still with me so far? Definition number three. Gates symbolize the places where destinies are decided and altered. Now we are making transitions from the realm of the physical into the spiritual. Proverbs 24 verse 7 give us in the easy translation. Proverbs 24 verse 7. If you have it, Proverbs 24 verse 7. It says, a fool cannot understand wisdom. We'll come to this, 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 this wisdom part in part 2. It says, he has nothing to say when the leaders meet. Can you see it? He has no contribution as far as decision making is concerned. There is no, no, no value that can be given. He does not even know where the leaders meet. He does not know the requirements to qualify as someone who can sit at the table and be involved in decision making. Ruth chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 13. Ruth chapter 3 verse 10 to verse 13. Naomi had given Ruth and for backgrounds, those who might not know this story, Naomi and her husband left Bethlehem at a time of economic chaos. And they had gone to a foreign land with their two boys. And they had married two ladies 
things went south the man died his sons died and Naomi looks at her wretched life and says God you've been you've been bitter to me I have no business being alive these two girls they, the biggest mistakes of their lives was to marry my sons ladies I apologize go 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 you have God's permission to go start a new go turn a new leaf and one of them turned back but there was a certain lady who knew that when I married your son it was not a mistake I heard God and even though things have gone south that same God is faithful and wherever you are going to I am going with you your people will be my people your God will be my God where you die I will die forget it I am not leaving you Naomi discovered this girl is not going anywhere so they arrive back in the land and they are living at the lowest cadre of society an helpless widow without sons someone just remembered the story of the woman and the prophet who said they are coming to carry my sons it was the worst thing that she could imagine imagine you now coming without sons you had sons but you have returned without sons no husband completely helpless at the mercy of welfare welfare so here was Ruth found a place that the welfare program was encouraging the staff at the door that buzzed her in they were encouraging she heard that the boss of that company was like distant relative and the welfare package was nice they'll give her coupons and give her vouchers and she'll be able to do groceries and go home and say oh mom groceries and that's how they were getting by until one day Naomi just told herself there must be a reason why God ordered your steps back here it's not so that you'll be bringing groceries home every evening there is destiny to you now this is what you must do <coughs> it says that's MD the CEO the president of the company is our distant relative Ruth said that's nice he said no 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 not that's nice there is something he can do that will change our story this is what you must do my daughter so do you understand how we got to verse 10 so can I read on from here it says the Lord bless you my daughter Boaz exclaimed you are showing even more family loyalty now than you ever did for you have not gone after a younger man whether rich or poor what vibe do you get from here that Boaz was likely he a single what else do we know about Boaz an older man than even Ruth right because he said the Lord bless you the Lord bless you so if I'm meeting somebody who is like my mate it's not likely I'm like the Lord bless you my my daughter and some of you I saw what you just did now I'm coming for you you know I, I have 10 eyes I can see you in the spirit <laughs> verse 11 it says now don't worry about a thing my daughter please please don't miss this I will do what is necessary for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman amen so Ruth had a reputation that even though she was single and she was free she was not everywhere amen she was not like ah, God has been bad to me so even if I do what I want to do I've earned the right to have you met people who, who they, they misbehave as punishment to God for not answering their prayer you've not, you've not met people like that before it's very funny it's like a child in school saying I will fail because I'm annoyed with my parents wow because it's your parents name that will be on the certificate wow what your parents get is the glory it's your life it's your degree I don't know who I'm speaking to if you want to do them amen somebody say victory at the gates verse 12 let's go to verse 12 it says but while it is true that I am one of your family redeemers the book of Ruth really is a book about Jesus it says there is another man who is more closely related to you than I am he says stay here tonight in the morning i will talk to him if he's willing to redeem very well let him marry you but if he's not willing then as surely as the lord lives i will redeem you myself he says now stay here until morning now now please i'm praying that the lord will give you understanding 
this is where the testimony of many ends it's a testimony of favor and this is where it ends but Boaz is saying that for every testimony of favor to be sealed in time there is a place where the leaders will gather and where the decision will be legalized and it will be cast in stone Ruth chapter 3 and verse 18 Ruth chapter 3 and verse 18 Naomi said wait my daughter until you find out what happens for the man will not rest can you see it now this is prayer after testimony hey, I am hoping somebody will see it guys will you see it can you see it so Ruth gets, gets home and says wow greatest testimony Boaz said he is going to do what he needs to do he is going to do what he needs to do does not mean he has done what he needs to do for him to go ahead and do it prayer will be involved somebody spoke and said there will be no rest until this matter is settled can you see it guys can you see it so what happened verse 1 of Ruth chapter 4 Boaz went up to the city gate the place where business and legal matters where where what where what meaning that if Boaz just strolled to the guy's house have you heard of Ruth and Naomi oh the babe from Moab yeah you know that our guy has some land and stuff oh land I'm interested but there's a babe also uh, I don't want the girl I just want the land well you can get the girl if you want the girl you have to get the land if you want the land you have to get the girl Ah, you are next in line you know they could have had a conversation in a beer parlor only that Boaz does not drink amen Bozos Bozos drink so you can meet Bozos in the beer parlor you won't meet Boaz in the beer parlor the only issue is some people go to the beer parlor to meet Bozo and start fasting and prayer you know you just want to marry this guy you just want him to be a mixture of you know you, you want you want three songs with the anointing of Pastor Adeboe you know and even in the realm of the spirit is confused you want a, a fire speaking bad boy and everyone is like we don't understand what do you my sister what do you really want like what do you want he said, my dream man is tall, he's dark, he's handsome. He has like a few tattoos. He clubs at night, drinks a little bit. And then he goes, ah, he's like pity. He does let God arise. He moves under the anointing. He heals the sick, raises the dead, and clubs on Friday. Then the angels will now say, my brother, my, my sister, sorry. My sister, they'll wake you up. They'll bring you water, holy water. And say, you need to wash your face. I see you because who thou wantest existed not. They will tell you in King James English. You know, it's funny. It's funny what people desire. But listen, the gate is the place where business and legal matters are settled. So they sat down and Boaz said that we are going to settle this matter at the gate. This is the introduction and if there's anything i want you to remember today is that if you cannot leverage wisdom and have a voice or representation at the gate you'll be victim of decisions you'll just hear this happen that happened and should i tell you the first gates that unlock all gates supernatural gates supernatural gates Guys, are you, are you really ready this month? Are you sure you're ready? Somebody say supernatural gates. Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, are you. He had asked the question, Who do men say that I am? Answers had come. And Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17. Jesus answered, and said to him 17 blessed are you simon bar jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven and i also say to you 
uh, Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it verse 19 I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven now I know this is a portion of scripture you know many times the answers we seek are in the scriptures we think we know so I'm going to break it down for us because you must see it guys you must see it Job chapter 1 you know there are decision making meetings in the realm of the supernatural that result in an event if you did not have representation there you just discover things happening. Job chapter 1 verse 13. It says now there was a day when his sons, Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their oldest brother's house. And then this happened. And then that happened. Well, the back end is that there was a Job 1 6 to 12 before there was a Job 1 13. There was a meeting at the gates before there was a certain day. Guys, are you seeing it? The highest level of playing is to have representation at the gate. So that when the certain day comes, there is no shock. Are you getting it? Are you seeing it? Do you know there is a seat for you on that table? Oh, do you agree with me that there is a seat for you on that table? And you can be part of the decision-making process, forging the destinies of nations. Because Job had no idea what had happened in the... In fact, I believe that this insight came at the point of his restoration. That was when he now knew that there was a bet and God was bragging about him. He said, God, please, next time. Next time. Can you brag? What kind of brag is that? <laughs> so the question is, can God brag about you? First Kings chapter 22. First Kings 22. He says in the third year, we'll come back to this guy next week. Because there's, there's a lot of wisdom lessons we can learn. In the third year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, he went down to see the king of Israel. Okay? Verse 2, verse 3. The king of Israel said to his officials, don't, what does this sound like? This sounds like somebody thinking out loud, right? Are you still there? He says, don't you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs to us and yet we are doing nothing to take it from the king of Aram. Aram is Syria. So if your Bible says Syria, you are not reading another place. What does this sound like to you? A thought. You just wake up one morning. I'm changing careers. You wake up one morning. That guy that has been on my case, maybe I should actually tell him yes. See, I am telling you that your thoughts have a source. Oh, you, is, is somebody listening to me? Decisions are made at gates and they enter into the realm of the physical as thoughts. And if you are not on the table where the decision is being made, at best, you need to just cry out for mercy. Because here is a king saying, I just feel like going to Ram of Gilead. He does not know that there was a meeting. There was a meeting where the exact name that was called is Ramoth Gilead. And this was Ahab. So Ahab now, verse 4. So he asked Jehoshaphat, will you go with me against Ramoth Gilead? We are going to come to this wisdom next week. Because someone who has judgment written on their destiny cannot be your partner in destiny. Should we push this sermon till next week? Guys, are you sure you are ready to receive this word? Ahab had judgment hanging on his destiny. Jehoshaphat was a descendant of David, through whom the Christ will be born. He decided that his best friend will be Ahab. And Ahab woke up feeling like going to Ramoth Gilead. The only issue is that there was a meeting that said Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab goes to his bestie and said, Jehoshaphat, will you fight with me? Jehoshaphat said, guy you know you're my best friend my army is your army we're going to fight together but the, the, the God of David showed him mercy 
So let's, let's, let's inquire of the Lord first. There's no time to tell you how this story ends. Just jump to 1 Kings 22. Let's read verse 19 to verse 21. This is a real prophet that was not part of the prophets on payroll. Ahab had 400 prophets on payroll. This one refused their payroll. So he, he, he was not forced to say what the rest were saying. Micaiah continued, Hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. This is a court session. This is a gate. With all the multitudes, other versions says, hosts of angels standing around him. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead? This is where the name was called. Ahab woke up one morning. Huh? Why don't we just go to Ramoth Gilead? Wow, bright idea. Why don't we just, you know, like just sell this car? Wow bright idea. Why don't I just go for an MBA? Actually makes sense. Bright idea. My question is what gates have decided the thoughts you are currently nursing? Are they the gates of heaven or are they the gates of Hades? Because for you to have representation at the gate, he said there is a person there that when he gets there he has nothing to say. He calls that person a fool. Second Kings chapter 3. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take our time to tell us more about Jehoshaphat. Please hold on with Second Kings 3. Take me back to Matthew chapter 16. I want to show us something. Matthew chapter 16. Jesus says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Sorry, we need it. We, we will have a bigger board in the new place, okay? Not a man. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just like informing you. I didn't pray. I didn't pray. You are in agreement. Okay, I take it. I take it. Do you know there's nothing as terrible as misusing scripture? There is, and I need to be careful the way I say this. There is a whole, in fact, the largest, the you can see that Pete is struggling with it. I should be careful. The largest Christian organization took out this verse and said that Jesus handed the church to Peter. And that means that Peter is the first pope. The only issue is that the first pope had a wife. The first pope raised the dead the first pope spoke in tongues the shadow of the first pope so can you see that something happened somewhere I'll, I'll show you okay, are you ready for this month we are going to, to the roots of the roots we are not polishing leaves this, this month blessed are you Simon Bar Jonah flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven and I also say to you Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And in that scripture, I, I, I want to show you the three keys for the one who will prevail at the gates. Do you want to see it? Number one, revelation. Number two, the legislative powers of the ecclesia. And number three, this number three is where I want to stay today. I know I don't have time, but if, if you will give me five minutes, I want to stay on number three. Is that okay? Somebody alters. I need another color. <sighs> Can you just pray the language of the spirit where you are? It's about to get deeper now. It's about to get deeper. It's about to get deeper. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right. Jesus shows clearly that as far as revelation is concerned, there are two sources. Thank you, sir. 
you, you want me to continue I'm trying to round up but it's like they are giving me more time it says that there is the source that is called flesh and blood right right and there is the source that is my father right did you see that he says I'll build my church the word Jesus uses for the church is ecclesia there are people who are called out and empowered to make legislative decisions and then number three I want you to see number three I will guys can we read it together verse 19 want to go I will give you the keys slowly slowly I know you know the verse of the kingdom of of the kingdom of okay and whatever you bind on will be bound in when you see earth and heaven used in the same breath you are talking of altars if this is the spirit realm and this is the physical realm the intersection can I give you a quick definition of an altar will you remember it if, we, if I say it's too fast it's online an altar is the name given to a person a place or a thing where the atmosphere by instruction has been deliberately conditioned to reproduce the habitat of a spirit being such that the presence of that entity in that place feels like home a person a place a thing now you, you now begin to understand why the fathers someone like Abraham anywhere he goes is raising altar altars are raised now he's talking about keys of the kingdom of heaven but the next thing he says is what you bind on earth it means that those altars are raised on earth initiated on earth a person will leave this service and receive the audacity and the confidence to go and initiate something he's saying you will initiate it and you will make things that looks like you are doing it here but it's going to have implications here and that what you've done is that you've secured a place on the table so that by the time there is now a transference of events you are not just stumbling on happenings you were a stakeholder is it making sense to us can I ask you a question if you I know you are not you obviously are not but if you are the devil if you are and this is the power of a people how will you fight it let's take it one by one revelation how will you fight it number one no revelation from the father if there will be revelation at all let it be flesh and blood have you seen flesh and blood revelation before empty rev deep with nothing deep deep with nothing he said that's the highest form of light that they must see however we are most comfortable when there is no light at all so blindness let them see nothing guys can you see this is intel let them see nothing let them know nothing okay so no sight no illumination and the highest form of their revelation is flesh and blood deep stuff deep stuff that all the secret don't seek deep stuff that that is best-selling books but but lives in bondage deep stuff number two if you have an ecclesia that has legislative power how can you fight this ones number one this unity let KICC be offended with IKCC let their pastors beef themselves let them let them you, you took my member you took my church you bought the keyboard we we're supposed to buy you stole our design your lead worshiper is my lead worshiper <laughs> my goodness let them continue fighting let them not know that there is something that happens when they come together and they make decrees as god ex ecclesia that they can pass laws they themselves they are mobile gates let them not know this unity and distraction guys if you audit the body of christ today sadly so speaking generally you will discover that even our prayers 
and prayer points are proof that we are distracted. It is the biggest proof of our distraction. What are the top 10 needs of the average believer today? Top 10 fire requests. Say, it was a fire meeting. The place was packed. Wow, the place was packed. It was a very fire meeting. Yes, it was a fire meeting. What did we pray about? We prayed about money. We prayed about car. We prayed about uh, life partner. And we prayed about children. And we released prophetic blessings. Wow, you released prophetic blessings? What were the prophetic blessings? You will blow. You will move. You will explode. Wow. And there's somebody sitting somewhere saying, wow. Souls are thronging into hell. The people with the power, the real power, they are busy doing distractions. Number three, altars. Uh, I told you guys I needed 12 hours, right? But we have to land this plane. How will you fight this one? Let me tell you something I promised I will say today from life class. The power of every altar, the power written of every altar is the cost of the sacrifice that is on it. Hello. Second Kings chapter 3 verse 26. There are so many examples, but time will not permit us. You know, I told you I will come back and tell you about Jehoshaphat. That battle, that battle, do you remember that Ramoth Gilead battle? Do you remember the Ramoth Gilead battle? The only prophet that spoke for God said, unless I'm not a man of God, that thing you are going for, I'm seeing Israel scattered like sheep without shepherd. You are telling the king that without, what does that mean? And the king got the message. He said, I told you this guy does not prophesy well for me. He does not say the things I want to hear. He only says the things God is saying. Wow. I thought that was the, wow, what's the definition of a prophet? Oh, wow. He doesn't say what I want to hear. He only says what God is saying. Wow. Wow, that's deep. I never knew a prophet was somebody who was to say what God is saying. Wow, mind blown. Do you know that same battle? Ahab convinced his bestie, Jehoshaphat. You go normally. When kings go to war, kings dress like kings. You'll be able to tell this is the king. The way they are surrounded, the formation. You guys that play chess, you know the way the king and the queen, they are on the board. They don't look like the rest, right? Ahab took, can we use our chess illustration? Took carving, carved himself to look like a pawn. And went to war looking like a normal soldier. And for some strange reason, the Syrian said, we're not interested in killing people today. We just want the king. And he gave clear instructions. When you find the king, take him out, battle closed. So they went to war looking for the person dressed like a king. Guess who was looking like a king? Our guy. And as they, as they were approaching him, guess what, Joseph? I like to picture. Can you picture this with me? It's not me. It's not me. <laughs> A descendant of David at war saying it is not me. David was vibrating in his grave. He said, Who gave birth to this guy? A child of God shaking because of cockroach. No, no. Who, who gave birth to these ones? Which Jesus, which Jesus' name do they mean when this when they end their prayer with in Jesus' name? A descendant of David. It's not me, it's not me. Then the guys naturally saw the face. He said, This is the king of Judah. This is not the guy we're looking for. So they just used their intercom. They told their commander-in-chief, we found the king. We found a king. But we didn't find the king. What should we do? He said, leave him alone. That was the sure message of David speaking. <laughs> that was the sure message of David speaking. And then, the first, guess the first thing that he believed he did. He took his crown and threw it away. That's not casting crowns. It's not that one. That was thank you. That's throwing crowns. Do you do you want to know that war ended? As the guys were just feeling bad, we didn't even really get to kill today. You know that's what makes military people. We didn't kill today. I didn't use my new. We just got these new AKs. We have not done any work. Somebody just said, "Oh, 
just so that this bullet will do one work today. Stray bullet. <laughs> then the gates now said there was a decision at the gates that there's judgment, prophecy hanging over Ahab at Ramoth Gilead. Stray bullet received redirection and located Ahab dressed like a civilian. And that was how Ahab was taken out. Guys, don't make decisions with your physical eyes alone. Involve your spiritual gates. And this is me trying to imagine. Trying to imagine. When Lot's wife was praying and trusting God for life partner. And she was just there. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, I want a God-fearing man. I want a man that serves the God of Abraham. Wow, that serves the God of Abraham. You are praying for lots. No, God, I'm not like, like praying for Lot. Even though Lot is a blessed man and is a rich guy. And he told me he's moving. Glory to God. He's moving. The only issue is where Lot is moving to. Is where? As at the time Lot was moving, that was the best real estate on earth. The only issue is there was a meeting at the gates. The place was marked for demolition. They didn't know. Don't go and invest in something that is marked for demolition in the spirit. You can see. I'm telling you, if you pay attention to this, you will save yourself many troubles. Many troubles. And that's why I want everyone under the sound of my voice in the room, watching online, it is time to begin to take responsibility for the activation of your personal altars. Because the realm of the spirit intersects with the physical and their decisions, activities at the altars that determine eventual outcomes. Second Kings chapter 3. I, I need to round up now. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 26 and verse 27. The same Jehoshaphat was fighting now with one of the sons of Ahab. Ahab and Jehoshaphat, they were besties so much. Both of them had children that were namesake. Have you seen that kind of thing before? People who are so like, like besties, you name your child this, I name my child that, and we just know that. The same Jehoshaphat went to war and they had found Elisha and Elisha reluctantly said I don't talk to, to descendants of Ahab if not for Jehoshaphat I will have a conversation with you go and bring me a minstrel and as they began to play the spirit of the Lord came on Elisha and he said you might not see the wind you might not see the clouds but I tell you surely that these valleys will be full of water and that Moab that you are going to, you will surely discomfit them. The next day, the whole place filled with water. The prophetic word was that Moab was supposed to be defeated, right? 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 Verse 26. When the king of Moab saw that he was losing the battle, he did one last show of strength. He led 700 of his swordmen in a desperate attempt to break through the enemy lines near the king of Edom. He says, but they failed. Verse 27. Then the king of Moab took his oldest son, who would have been the next king, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. He says there was great anger against Israel, and the Israelites did what? Battle ended because somebody put sacrifice on an altar. This was a demonic sacrifice on a demonic altar. And even though the children of God had prophecy that they were going to defeat Moab, a demonic sacrifice. Do you know, do you know why people in the occult always... That's why when you see um, devilish people doing like plants, doing herbs, doing fume, you know, blowing powder, those ones are learning work. In the real deal, they transact in blood. And the reason why they request for blood is because they know that the power of an altar is the price of the sacrifice on it. So if we can put blood on it, now, even in the world of blood, there's still ranking. That's where you now begin to hear things like, it is now time for you to go to the next level. We need blood. That's not right. 
we look for people to no 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 not people the blood of somebody dear to you the blood of the beloved ah no I'm not doing it again it's too late <laughs> you have done again <laughs> ah see guys don't do business with the devil stay with Jesus help me tap your neighbor say stay with Jesus say stay with Jesus it says that a demonic king put a demonic sacrifice on a demonic altar and it closed the case but guess what guess what this is not the first king to put his only son his begotten son oh they didn't hear me they didn't hear me they didn't hear me they didn't hear me i was expecting somebody to jump up see what i am telling you is that a revelation that your altar is the most powerful guarantees you a seat on the table and you have a voice there there is no decision that should be made against the child of god who knows that god gave his only son his best son and he sacrificed him for you and for me guys there is no there, there, there is no blood more powerful than that if anybody should use it against you it's because you did not know how powerful your own altar was that's where the revelation comes now from the father let them go and sacrifice blood you can see where fear begins to fly out what am i afraid of everybody is in me. my family is doing this everybody in my family is doing that my question is what is your real family where is your real family do you know what god did to your own firstborn your original firstborn do you know what he did to him put him on a shameful cross naked beaten with roman whips embarrassed and he says he who knew no sin he became sin took everything the revelation of that guarantees you victory at the gates please rise on your feet rise on your feet Romans 8 verse 32 Romans 8 32 Romans 8 32 when you when you see a child of God who is moving like somebody who is defeated you just see somebody who does not have a revelation of the cross when you're like this oh PD I had that dream again they came after me again like wow wow a descendant of David one that blood was shed for the same Jesus no what happened to I have given you authority all authority in heaven in earth has been given to me what happened to you trampling upon snakes and, 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 and serpents and, and, and scorpions what happened to that I want to leave you with a responsibility there's the sacrifice of Jesus and there's our response to that sacrifice our response to that sacrifice is called the believer's personal prayer altar did you hear me did you hear me the power rating of that will be dependent on the cost on it can i just show you this in 30, 30 seconds if this is your altar your bracing altar your personal prayer altar it's not bracing it's golden but well, there's no time to explain that so this is it and we said the sacrifice right this is sacrifice now but we want a very powerful altar there are two ways or maybe there are three ways for us to have a very powerful altar right number one is we are putting constant constant pouring we are assuming that there's fire burning and that, that fire never goes out and then we have something on the altar something on the altar now it's either you are putting something on the altar regularly or you are making lump sums do you understand it so there are people of stature really what i'm talking about here now is stature my goodness we need a retreat what i'm talking about here really is stature what i mean by stature is there are people like daniel they've done three times a day for over 50 years do you understand what i'm talking about and there are people under the sound of my voice they've been doing giant challenge now for about one year i'm telling you there is a power rating here now and there are those who are saying that we will do lump sum consistently for decades those are the dangerous people that god is raising for his end time army did you hear me did you hear me can god enlist you in the army that there'll be fire on your altar so when we tell you oh we're praying for four hours you know there are some 
Christians that can't relate. Eh? I, when I'm done praying for that 10 minutes, I think I'm done. I pray for my dad, pray for my mom, pray for my job, and pray for the business. The power on your altar is not about the business. If there's power on your altar, guess what will be fine? The business will be fine. We've been doing six hours prayer and there are many looking at us as though we are mad. A friend of mine who, is a, who sits in the office of a prophet out of Edmonton, he called me. He said, Pastor Dyer, I'm coming to Toronto. I sense a call to pray. I said, oh man of God, I'm coming to Edmonton. Oh, he said, amazing. He said, but the Toronto one, we need, to, we need time to pray. I said, what is the Lord saying? He said, it is more than six hours. I said, I'm sensing that we need to go deeper. There are some, there are some that will, if PD should to, to levi, levitate now, there are people that will say that any prayer that is more than 30 minutes. <laughs> PD, I'll see you. I'll be praying with you and for you from a distance. What you are doing is you are weakening your personal order. To the extent to which your personal altar is weak, you are dimming the light for the real altar that secures your victory. That's the one where blood is oozing. The most precious blood of all. Can you see it? So can you see how it is connected? Can you, can you really see how it is connected? Romans 8.32 Let's read together. He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He says, certainly that the gate first, other things will follow. Why are you not praying? I have a job. Why are you not praying? I have a shift. Why are you not praying? I have a this. Guys, it's a trap. May I suggest to you it's a trap? You become a person of prayer and watch every other thing align. Are you interested in a position at the gates? Are you sure that you will sit down and you will decide nations? You will decide what happens next in Canada over the next 10 years? That people will not sit down and just decide, let's start teaching the children now. A man can marry a woman. A woman can. Do you know this powerlessness and this distraction of the church? I said it casually at, at, at defeating sexual immorality, part one. And there was a, new, a news bulletin that was sent to me this week that the pedophiles have rebranded and their new identity is MAP minority or minor attracted persons and no I'm not joking guys and there is a plan for them to integrate as part of the LGBTQ2S community My, minor attracted persons now, now many of you are like oh that's madness but well, we were not at the gates when the decisions were being made when the books in the library were being stocked we, we didn't have representation there and next week we'll come to the earthly part and now the wisdom will begin to invade places where decisions are being made but first it sits at the spiritual gate from whence decisions are made from whence thoughts come I think it is okay for you to just raise your hands to heaven and say thank you Jesus for your sacrifice hey for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son the 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 priciest the priciest the priciest the costliest sacrifice of all the father himself gave for you and for me there is nothing he's asking you and I to give that he himself has not given come on somebody say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you If there's anyone under the sound of my voice and you've not made a decision for Jesus, this is the moment. This is the moment. Oh yeah, you, 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 your, your, your Christian life has been a joke and you know it. I am saying, Peter, I feel a, a need to start again. I want to rededicate my life today. I want us to say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for taking my place in the grave. Thank you because you rose triumphantly on the third day. I believe you're alive today. And I ask that you live in me. I ask that you live through me. I receive eternal life in my spirit. And I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we are prayed. In Jesus' name we are prayed. 
I want you to pray. Can you hold a partner? Just find just one partner in twos. Let's do this very quickly. And you pray for that partner. The Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for my brother, for my sister, open their eyes. Let them begin to receive revelations of the Father. Revelations that have their source from the throne room. I ask that you, any door they have opened to all sorts of insights, demonic insights, astrological insights, insights from flesh and blood, and all sorts of things that have no consequence in life. Oh, is this how you pray for your brother? Is this how you pray for your brother? I need more fervence in the room. Father, open your eyes to begin to see. A revelation, a revelation. Open your eyes, open your eyes. In the name of Jesus, every blindness, take it away. Every alternate source that is not powering kingdom agenda, take it away. Thank you, gracious Father. Glory be unto your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Quickly look for another partner. Look for another partner very quickly. We are going to pray for the body of Christ. And say, Father, we pray for your body. We pray for unity. We pray against distractions. Whatever the enemy is dangling against us. Dangling against us. Dangling against us. Distracting us. Giving us arguments. Arguing flimsy things. Unimportant things. Arguing. Is it, is it, is it chapter 2 verse 5? Or chapter 5 verse 2? Should it be a black scarf? Should it be this long or that long? Should it be white or black? Flimsy things at the expense of our legislative power. Oh, Father, we pray for fire again in your church. Cold churches come alive. Dead churches come alive. Dead believers, distracted ones, 50 prayer points. None of them about the Father's will. 100 prayer points. A whole booklet on prayer. No one about the Holy Spirit and His ministry there. It's all about me, myself, and I. Father, in your mercy, set us on fire again. Glory be unto your name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. The last prayer you are going to pray for yourself. If you can't just put your hands, depending on what you are wearing, you might be able to do it on your chest or your head. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, set fire on my altar. I want to burn for you. It's a dangerous prayer point. You are starting it now, but you are not ending it now. Father, set fire on my altar. Some of you, there will be just quick deposits of fire. Quick deposits of fire. Quick deposits of fire. Guys, it's to the extent that you want it. Set fire on my altar. I want to burn for you. I want to be represented in the back end table. Where decisions are being made. Are being made. Are being made. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He said he has heard you. And there is a response. He said, I'm sending this fire. It will begin, but it will not end. It will begin, and it will not end. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, take 60 more seconds and press it. Rakatele gadebo so tamre dein kaide lo siate. Le shovran de kaida sadiata. Le shavrate izede. Senomi kalaita tozi. Le shavran te kelebo sayata. For you, for you, for you. For you. Set our lives. Set us on fire for you. There are still people right now saying, This pastor sounds anointed. Let him pray for my car. Let him pray for my job. Let him pray for my marriage. And I am telling you, there is a seat at the table that you will determine auto industries. You will be in command of, 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 of nations. Some of the fire is enlarging your capacity. Is burning your current plan and is giving you a new blueprint. Fire for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. The angels carrying torches now. I know it's time for us to jump to the young adult service. But when you are honored like this, you don't take it for granted. There are torches and fires will be coming. I'm saying fires, I know it's bad English, but what I mean is there are multiple allocations of fire. It will burn, burn, burn. The same you, you will shock yourself. You will be interested in praying. You will be interested in Bible study without pressure. It's not like there's gun on your head. 
but now you want to devour the word you want to have full revelation of the sacrifice of Jesus you want to know what it means to be in him you want it you want to know what it means to be far above principalities and powers things that have plagued your family and plagued your lineage you are the hope I'm telling you you are the hope you are the hope for your city you are the hope for your province you are the hope for your nation you are the hope for your family oh father right now by the authority in the name of Jesus we receive an endowment of power we receive an endowment of your fire he's resting 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 thank you precious holy ghost he's resting silence all over the room just the strings playing softly he's resting decisions are concluded at the gates but the way there is a supreme court there is a supreme gate that decisions and writings not in your favor can be unwritten the month is young the year is counting down things have been written concerning some of us they are not in your favor and we come by the blood to the supreme gate to the supremest El Elyon sits enthroned Father for everyone that a decision in the supernatural has manifested in the physical and it is working against them by the authority in the name of Jesus right now I cancel that decision in the name of Jesus for as many whose eyes have been blinded by circumstance blinded by society blinded by activity blinded by the emptiness in our world and these are stakeholders these are fire bearers and they don't know it yet they don't know it yet I'm seeing in my vision a butterfly without wings and the Lord says it's restoring you will look like yourself again you will sound like your real true self some of you remember maybe when you were on campus when you freshly received Jesus but that fire is gone now you just want to use Jesus and coast and chill he says no I'm going to use you for my glory Father our answer is yes Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. I'm absolutely confident that you've been blessed by the word. And if you'd love to be a part of what God is doing in our midst, I would invite you to be a part of any of our services on Wednesday. The time is on your screen, 7 p.m. online. And on Sundays, the times for our services will be on your screen. 
To be a part of the giving, you can visit our website and support the amazing work God is doing in this ministry. I can't wait to be with you next time. God bless you.